8.7 practice problems. A student pours 10 milliliters of a sample of a uh, solution containing uh, acetic acid with a pKa of 4.8 and sodium acetate into a test tube. The student adds a few drops of uh, bromo, bromo green uh, to the test tube and observes a yellow color, which indicates that the pH of the solution is less than 3.8. Based off of the result, which of the following is true about the relative concentrations of the acetic acid and sodium acetate in the original solution? So um, we can see that our pKa was 4.8, and now we have a pH of less than uh, 3.8. As we added uh, acetate to the solution, we are going to go ahead and uh, shift uh, to uh, uh, get the uh, hyd hydrogen back out of the solution via Le Chatelier. And so my original concentration of the acetic acid versus the uh, sodium acetate is going to be more in the acetic acid and less of the sodium acetate. Benzoic acid has a pKa of 4.2 and a molar solubility of 0.0278 molar. Sodium benzoate uh, has a molar solubility of 4.16. Several 50 milliliter samples of 2 molar uh, sodium benzoate uh, are treated with a 3 molar hydrochloric acid solution. The pH is recorded, and any of the solid crystals are filtered, dried, and weighed. The data from the experiment are given in the table above. Which of the following best describes the experimental results? Um, so we are going to uh, decrease our pH. We're going to make the pH more acidic. And as we make the pH more acidic, we are going to be able to uh, precipitate out uh, more crystals. And that's going to be the benzoic acid. Uh, so we can say that uh, when the pH is uh, less than the original pKa, because pKa is going for P, uh, benzoic acid is 4.2. So when the pH is less than 4.2, um, we do precipitate out more of the benzoic acid, not the reverse. When the pH is greater than the pKa, then we really don't precipitate out very much of the benzoic acid at all. We really get a lot of benzoic acid coming out of solution uh, when we have uh, the pH being less than the pKa. And uh, when the pH is less than the pKa, that means that overall we have shifted the um, reaction to go ahead and uh, capture uh, more of the uh, benzate, benzoate uh, molecules and the uh, benzoic acid is what precipitates out, not the sodium benzoate. Uh, sodium compounds, since sodium is in the uh, alkali family, uh, all of them are going to be soluble. So uh, the sodium benzoate is definitely not going to be the thing that precipitates out, uh, which is another way that you could have eliminated this down. But answer choice A states that when pH is less than pKa, we get precipitation, and then we know that the benzoic acid is the thing that's going to precipitate, not the sodium benzoate, as the sodium benzoate is going to be very soluble since all compounds with alkali metals are soluble. The stepwise dissociation of the amino acid glycine is represented by the chemical equation above. A student titrates a sample of glycine dissolved in dilute acid with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. The data are plotted in the following graph. Based off of the data, which of the following species has the highest concentration in the aqueous solution of glycine when pH is at seven? So when pH is at seven, 
uh, we are right here. Um, and that is going to be when we uh, really start flipping um, up and uh, have our first um, instance where we uh, are changing our pH. So initially our pH is uh, very acidic. We're adding the uh, sodium hydroxide which uh, eventually is going to get us to dissociate and then suddenly we have much more of the um, uh, much more of our uh, second stepwise um, element here is going to start appearing. Um, this is where we have produced uh, the most of the uh, first deprotonation of the glycine uh, molecule. And glycine is going to, uh, the one uh, proton removed glycine is going to uh, stick around for uh, the majority of uh, this portion here. So we have glycine increasing, increasing, increasing. Um, we definitely do not have a lot of our initial glycine uh, remaining. And we don't have any of our final, final product that's going to be um, what's going to be uh, the main factor up here. And that's going to be option choice C. So between uh, these two, this one's not even an option here. So really, we are just left with answer choice B. Again, we are producing more of that first uh, deprotonated glycine molecule uh, as we add the hyd uh, sodium hydroxide, uh, continuing to make more of that first deprotonated glycine uh, until we reach here where we have that second deprotonation. So the uh, first deprotonated glycine molecule is going to be what we have the majority of at that uh, pivot point in our graph. The graph below shows a titration curve that results when 100 milliliters of a 0 0.0250 molar acetic acid is titrated with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. Which of the following indicators is the best choice for this titration? So uh, we can see that overall our, our pH uh, equilibrium here um, at X is going to be between uh, 8 and 10, and so we would choose a uh, an indicator that would change color uh, closest to that uh, pH range, and so that would be phenylphthalein or option choice D.